All right, we're out at the Three Points Range, which is Tucson Rifle Club, and today we're uh, really just having some fun shooting. We were shooting the pistols out at long range, and we brought them in to close range here. One of the questions we get a lot, or one of the things people seem to ask about a lot, is the uh, length of barrels. So we went with the two extremes here. There's a Glock. This is the Glock 27, so it's the 40 caliber subcompact. It's basically the smallest Glock we can shoot. And then we've got a Glock 24, which is the competition long one. So this is the longest one we can shoot. So we've got the full spectrum as far as Glocks and as far as most pistols are not, you know, 40 calibers and stuff aren't going to get a lot smaller than that one. They're not going to get too much bigger than this one. In addition, we've got a, an older Ruger. This one's a 9mm. Big difference though. A much different type of pistol. And uh, different trigger. Everything's different about that one, so we'll give that one a shot. And then we've got an M&P 45 that I just recently did a little modification on, so we had it out at the range today too. So, got a couple of different calibers, couple of different models, couple of different lengths of barrel. The only thing that's going to be consistent really is the target that we're shooting at, which is not very far away, maybe seven yards at the most. Which uh, again, we're not target shooting here; we're just sort of practicing, uh, doing some testing. So one of the things we did want to try also, since we have it, is on this 24, which has a fairly long barrel. We're also going to swap out this aftermarket barrel. It's not a caliber conversion, it's just a uh, compensated one. And what that means is there's some holes up on top that we'll take a look at here. A typical barrel is just solid pipe, you know, solid piece of metal. This one's compensated, meaning there's some holes on top. So as that bullet leaves the chamber there, it starts heading its way down the barrel. At this point, some of that gas, that gas that's pushing it through, is going to be released and apply a downward pressure, a downward force. And that should happen four times, and you'll see that the, the holes get a little bit bigger progressively. So whether or not that's effective, we'll find out here. This isn't going to be the ultimate shooting test. We're going to shoot five rounds of ammo out of each one of them. We don't want this video to take longer than it needs to, plus ammo isn't cheap these days. We're going to shoot uh, Winchester White Box 9 through the Ruger. Uh, 45 is some reload stuff we got at the gun show years ago through the uh, M&P and then through the Glocks. But they're both 40 caliber and both barrels are 40, so we'll shoot some Winchester White Box there. Typical stuff, you can almost get the stuff at Walmart anywhere. Uh, this is the target we're shooting at out there is a, is a dot torture drill, which is a, one of the things that we like to practice with, but we're just going to use it as a series of, uh, what are those, maybe three inch circles out there, two inch circles. So I guess let's start with the uh, 24, the big one. Well, the long one at least. And I'll shoot at the, uh, the hole that's in the circle that says number four on it. So the top right. Not my best shooting for sure, but we have to start somewhere. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make sure the Glock's empty. Drop that slide, pull the trigger, pull that slide off the top, quickly take that recoil spring out, and we'll swap that standard barrel with this compensated barrel we just talked about. So now we're shooting the uh, same gun, same ammo. Only difference going to be that now you can see the compensation there. And just an FYI, the uh, Glocks with the longer slides do have these cutouts, but it's not necessarily for compensation. It happens to work for compensation in this case. But for example, if we bring out a regular Glock 35, it also has this slot, but again, it's not for compensation. It's actually to reduce weight since the frame of the Glock is the same on all the, the full and standard uh, large frames. Uh, it uses the same recoil spring, so in order to do the mechanical stuff it needs to do, the uh, hole is just to reduce some weight. So next up we'll shoot this one with the compensated barrel, same Winchester ammo. And this time I will shoot at the uh, the one right below it, so I guess that's number uh, six, is that five, six, seven. So it does have one hole in it already, but we'll shoot it that way. Well, I'm not going to say that was much better, 
I don't shoot this barrel too often, but I'm not a fan of it. That was a very crisp shot, and I don't know if it sounded a lot different to me. I don't know if that comes through on the camera, but that felt really different. That's worth the whole video on itself, I think. So anyway, we'll jump over to the MMP 45 now. Five rounds of 45 ACP. And again, I did the modification of pulling off the uh, external safeties, which were bothering me. This time I'm going to shoot at that number 10, the bottom target, the bottom right. Probably shot a little fast for bullseye shooting, but I want to get this test going. So next we'll jump to the Ruger 9. Five rounds again. Flip it up to uh, fire. Guess what? We'll shoot at that uh, number three. So kind of top middle there. Pleasure to shoot. A lot less recoil on that one for sure. Bigger frame and lighter bullet. And then last up we've got the uh, Glock 27, the small 40. And I guess we'll shoot this one at that number two dot. Smaller pistol, smaller barrel, same amount of recoil coming out of that ammo. So I didn't really evaluate as I was shooting there, but we did get some good results. And, uh, I'm not going to say this is an end-all, be-all comparison. Obviously, we're just shooting five rounds. But hopefully, that's going to be some discussion on the uh, various sizes and calibers out there. So we can take a little closer look. So I'm not going to remember everything here. What well, we shot the 40, the 24 first at this hole, right? And that's maybe these. Or did I throw that flyer from the 40? I don't remember. So this is a bad recap. But you can see, uh, was this the compensated one? I think. Did it shoot that much better? Yeah. And then this was the uh, 9? Yeah. No, 45. And then 9. Definitely. And then the uh, 27. So the 27, you can, I think, with these are the 27 for sure. Which, you know, there's my fist. So, you know, in real life, that's perfect defensive shooting. But when we're probably talking about, you know, accuracy or whatever, this uh, 9, you can see a couple of rounds right in the same hole there. What, we dropped 1 and 2? So still really good as far as accuracy. If we would have tightened that up just a hair, it would have been a nice group. And then the 45 was decent. But again, we're talking five 45 shells in a thing that's, you know, probably cover it with a big silver dollar or something. So I'm not complaining. They're all decent quality. Obviously, the little one's going to shoot a little worse. It looks like the compensated one does shoot a little bit better. So again, this isn't a end-all, be-all comparison, but hopefully, again, it starts some conversation. There's the nine. So nine, 40, and 45. But there's something we should mention. I can't pull the rounds out here because we're downrange and we don't bring ammo downrange, of course. The, both the 9mm and the 40 were both shooting ball, which means just a rounded bullet. With these 40s, though, I'm shooting a semi-trunicated, which I'll show you back on the bench. means that it's a... Uh, I don't have a pen on me, but it means it's a bullet that comes up with a flat. And what that means to us is that that's going to cut, like a paper cutter, a nice crisp hole out of the paper. So these are going to be a, a more effective paper cutter because of the shape of the bullet. Where this, you can see, it pierces the paper and rips its way through, but then there was nothing to remove paper, so a lot of that paper came right back. With the 40, there's a, like a, literally a hole missing, which is downrange somewhere. And with that 45 ball, you just have a bigger piece of something going through the paper, so it actually removed a little bit. If I come through the back here and apply some pressure, those holes close up close, smaller than they do on the 40s, again, because of just the shape of that bullet. So we talked about the shapes of the bullets, and here's the 45 ACP, the 40 caliber uh, in the middle, and then that 9 millimeter on the right. And you can see that flat top on the 40 caliber in the center is uh, what's called semi-turnicated, 
And the idea there is again that that flat top just cuts a hole, a nice circular, easy to see hole uh, through paper. It also allows it to be fairly easy to feed in a semi-auto, unlike a wad cutter, which definitely cuts a nice clean hole, but can be difficult to feed sometimes. So there's a little ammo tip for you. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.